Since its inception over half a century ago, McLaren has been a driving force in the world of Formula 1. With a record that boasts 12 drivers' championships and 8 constructors' titles, this British team has cemented its status as one of the most dominant and prestigious names in the sport. So let's take a look at the history of McLaren. Bruce McLaren, a New Zealand driver, had a successful career racing for the British Formula 1 team Cooper. However, McLaren wanted to compete in the Australasian Tasman series, which allowed for 2.5-litre motors in contrast to Cooper's 1.5-litre Formula 1 engine. When McLaren approached his employers about competing in the Tasman series with larger engines, he was met with resistance from team owner Charles Cooper, who insisted on using their normal Formula 1 engine. Undeterred, McLaren decided to take matters into his own hands and established Bruce McLaren Motor Racing in 1963. McLaren's new team was initially set up to run him and his prospective Formula 1 teammate, Timmy Mayer, using custom-built Cooper cars. The team won the 1964 Tasman Series. The early success of Bruce McLaren Motor Racing was marred by tragedy when Timmy Mayer died during the practice for the final race of the 1964 Tasman Series. The loss of his friend and teammate left Bruce devastated. Despite the heartbreak, Bruce continued to push forward with his racing ambitions. After the tragic accident, Bruce approached Teddy Mayer to help him purchase the Zerich sports car from Roger Penske. This led to Teddy Mayer and Bruce McLaren to begin discussing a business partnership, resulting in Teddy Mayer buying into Bruce McLaren Motor Racing Limited, ultimately becoming its largest shareholder. Bruce McLaren Motor Racing was based in Feltham and later Cornbrick, England and held a British license. However, Bruce was a man who liked to stand out from the crowd, so he decided not to use the traditional British racing screen on their cars. Instead, he opted for unique and striking colour schemes that were not based on national principles. While Bruce was busy building up his team, he also found time to race in sports car events in both the UK and North America. He even entered the 1965 Tasman series with a great Phil Hill by his side. However, after seeing Cooper's form decline, Bruce made the brave decision to race his own cars in 1966. It was a bold move that would change the course of his team's history forever. In 1966, Bruce McLaren's team made their Grand Prix debut at the Monaco race, making them one of the oldest Formula 1 teams still active today, alongside Ferrari. Unfortunately, their first race was cut short after just nine laps due to a terminal oil leak. The team's car, the M2B, was designed by Robin Hurd, but was let down by a poor choice of engines. They used a 3.0-litre version of Ford's Indianapolis 500 engine and a Serenissima V8, neither of which were powerful or reliable. The Serenissima V8 managed to score the team's first point in Britain, but overall the engine choices were disappointing for the team. For the 1967 season, Bruce decided to use a British Racing Motors BRM V12 engine, but delays with the engine's development meant that the team initially had to use a modified Formula 2 car called the M4B. The car was powered by a 2.1-litre BRM V8, but it didn't bring the desired success for the team. They later built a similar but slightly larger car called the M5A, specifically for the V12 engine. However, even with the new car, the team still struggled to achieve significant results. The best they managed was a fourth-place finish at Monaco. In 1968, McLaren saw a major upturn in their form as they were joined by the 1967 champion and fellow New Zealander, Denny Holm. The team's new M7A car, designed by Robin Hurd, was powered by the Cosworth DFV engine, which went on to be used by McLaren for the next 15 years. Bruce McLaren won the Race of Champions and Holm won the International Trophy, both of which were non-championship races before Bruce took the team's first championship win at the Belgium Grand Prix. Holm also won the Italian and Canadian Grands Prix later in the year, helping the team to secure second place in the Constructors' Championship. Now, the following year, McLaren continued to make progress with an updated version of the M7, and Bruce achieved three podium finishes. McLaren also experimented with four-wheel drive in the M9A, but the car only had a single outing driven by Derek Bell at the British Grand Prix. Bruce McLaren described driving it as trying to write your signature with somebody jogging your elbow. In 1970, McLaren experienced a tragic event when Bruce McLaren died in a crash while testing the new M8D Can-Am car. Teddy Mayer took over the team after Bruce's death and Denny Holm continued with Dan Gurney and Peter Gethin partnering him. 
Gurney had a promising start by winning the first two Can-Am events, but eventually left the team mid-season, leaving Geffen to take over. In 1971, the team failed to score a win despite Holm leading the opening round in South Africa before retiring with a broken suspension. Geffen left for BRM mid-season, leaving Holm and Jackie Oliver to continue the season. However, the 1972 season saw a significant improvement in the team's performance. Holm won the team's first Grand Prix in two and a half years in South Africa, and he and Peter Rebson scored 10 other podiums, resulting in the team finishing third in the Constructors' Championship. At the final race at Watkins Glen, McLaren gave Jody Schechter his Formula 1 debut. The McLaren M23 was the team's new car for the 1973 season, a masterpiece designed by the brilliant Gordon Coppock. It was a perfect blend for the best parts of McLaren's M19 and Indianapolis M16 cars, inspired by Lotus's iconic 72. The car proved to be a mainstay for four years, achieving remarkable success for the team. Denny Holm won in Sweden, while Peter Rebson clinched the only Grand Prix wins of his career in Britain and Canada. The team's fortunes shifted when Emerson Fittipaldi, who had previously won the World Championship with Lotus, joined McLaren in 1974. With Holm's win in the season opener in Argentina and Fittipaldi's victories in Brazil, Belgium and Canada, the team secured their first Drivers' Championship, with Fittipaldi leading the charge. The battle was intense, with Fittipaldi finally securing the championship with a fourth-place finish in the United States Grand Prix. That same season, the team also won their first Constructors' Championship. Despite a less successful 1975 season, with Fittipaldi finishing second in the championship behind Nicky Lauda, the McLaren M23 continued to be a force to be reckoned with. Jochen Maas, who replaced Holm, even managed to secure his sole Grand Prix win in Spain. 1981 marked the beginning of a new era for the McLaren racing team. The team merged with Ron Dennis's Project 4 Racing, and this decision proved to be a game-changer for the team. With renewed vigour, McLaren began winning again, and soon Nicky Lauda and Alain Prost scored successive World Championships from 1984 to 1986. In 1988, Ayrton Senna joined the team, and the following year he became World Champion for the first time as McLaren Hondas won all but one race. However, this was the start of a tumultuous period within the team, as teammates Senna and Prost engage in one of the most intense rivalries in Formula 1 history. Tensions between the two drivers ran high, causing Prost to leave the team after the 1989 season. Senna remained with McLaren until 1993 when he decided to seek new challenges with Williams. Senna's departure was a shock to many in the motorsports world. He had a successful six-year stint with the McLaren racing team, during which he won three World Drivers' Championships in 1988, 1990 and 1991. In the mid-1990s, Honda, which had been supplying engines to McLaren's Formula 1 team, withdrew from the sport. This, combined with the departure of drivers Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost, led to a period of struggle for the team. In order to turn things around, McLaren secured a partnership with Mercedes-Benz, who would supply their engines and also hired renowned designer Adrian Newey from rival team Williams. These moves paid off, and McLaren saw success with driver Mika Hakkinen winning back-to-back -back titles in 1998 and 1999. However, the team's most recent constructors' title remains the one they won in 1998. McLaren's performance in the early 2000s saw them finish second in both their Drivers' and Constructors' Championships for two consecutive years. However, the team experienced a difficult start to the 2004 season with just five points from the first seven races. Despite a strong recovery, they ended the year in fifth place. The following year, McLaren had the quickest car on the grid, but poor reliability meant they narrowly missed out on the Constructors' title despite winning 10 races. The team's star driver, Kimi Raikkonen, finished as the runner-up in the Drivers' Championship. In 2007, McLaren won eight Grands Prix, but was stripped of their Constructors' points and fined $100 million for benefiting from the possession of confidential Ferrari data. The intense rivalry between teammates Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso saw them finish level on points, just one shy of the driver's title. In 2008, McLaren saw the incredible achievement of Lewis Hamilton winning the driver's championship for the team for the first time in nearly a decade. However, they weren't strong enough to take the constructor's crown from Ferrari, resulting in a second-place finish. 
The following year was a tough start for the team, with Hamilton and Kovalainen struggling to score points, let alone win races. But with hard work, the team eventually turned the MP424 into a race-winning car, with Hamilton taking victories in Hungary and Singapore and helping McLaren to earn a well-deserved third place in the standings, just one point above Ferrari. In 2010, the car was not as fast as Red Bull's, but it was more reliable and shone in damp conditions, aided by the innovative and much-copied F-duct that allowed the drivers to stall the rear wing at speed. McLaren led the standings for the first half of the season, but ultimately finished second overall after securing five wins. The 2011 season saw McLaren unable to match Red Bull for qualifying speed, but they were the closest rivals to the dominant team and for a spell even edged ahead on race pace. With Hamilton and Button scoring three wins each, McLaren finished a clear second in the final standings. Roller coaster form plagued the team in the first half of the 2012 season, despite winning the first round in Australia. Button in particular struggled to get the best out of the Pirelli tyres. Mid-season updates put the MP4 27 back on pace, but despite victories for Hamilton and Button, reliability problems derailed their title bid. In 2013, after designing a completely new car, McLaren struggled in the early rounds, with the MP4 28 proving to be a handful for Button and new teammate Perez. The 64 race point scoring streak, stretching back to 2010, ended in Montreal, and the team finished the lowly fifth overall without a single podium finish. The 2014 season was McLaren's last with Mercedes power before switching to Honda, and it proved to be a tough one despite a double podium at the first round in Australia. Neither Button nor rookie teammate Magnussen challenged the top three again, and the team only secured fifth place overall. In 2015, the revived combination of McLaren and Honda found the current generation of power unit a tough nut to crack, resulting in an abysmal season despite having two former champions, Button and Fernando Alonso, at the wheel. The team only scored 27 points and dropped to 9th in the standings. The 2016 season saw much improvement for McLaren in their second year back in partnership with Honda, though the team was still a long way off podium contention. They improved to 6 in the standings, with the bulk of their 76 points scored by Fernando Alonso, who took them to their best results of 5th place in Monaco and Austin. Alonso missed one race through injury, allowing a top 10 debut for team protégé Stoffel van Dorn, who replaced Button for 2017. In 2017, McLaren endured a third consecutive disappointing season using Honda engines in their Formula 1 cars. Despite having what appeared to be an excellent chassis, drivers Fernando Alonso and Stoffel van Dorn only managed to score a total of 30 points over the course of the season. This poor performance was the final straw for McLaren's partnership with Honda, leading the team to switch to Renault power for the 2018 season. This move immediately brought improvement, with the team earning 40 points in the first five races. However, they were unable to maintain this form and ultimately only earned an additional 10 points over the remaining 16 Grands Prix. Despite some impressive performances from Fernando Alonso, McLaren finished the 2018 season in 6th place in the final standings. With the Renault partnership starting to gel in 2019 and rookie star Lando Norris pushing the experienced Carlos Sainz hard, McLaren re-established themselves as the clear best of the rest behind the big three teams. Third place in Brazil marked their first podium in five years. In 2020, quick and consistent performances saw McLaren beat their upper midfield rivals to third place in the standings as Ferrari faltered. The team also agreed to use Mercedes power from 2021. The 2021 season saw McLaren record their first win since 2012, with Ricardo and Norris taking the year's only 1-2 result by any team at Monza. Despite this success, they dropped to fourth overall after coming off worse in a season-long battle with Ferrari. The 2022 season proved to be a difficult one for McLaren as they dropped to fifth place. And there you have it, the history of McLaren. Now we want to hear from you. How soon do you think McLaren can return back to dominating the F1 scene? Let us know in the comments down below.